Please subscribe, like, and share. It really helps us out. And of course, if you have any questions, comment below and we will answer you as soon as we can. Welcome to another video in our series on IGCSE Geography. This is Episode 3. In today's lesson, we will be learning about rocks and landforms. If you haven't seen our previous videos, click on the card above. In today's lesson, we are going to be looking at the types of rocks. This topic really rocks. And you can take that for granted. Rocks can be divided into three main groups, classic, punk, and hard. But seriously, let's try that again. Rocks can be divided into three main groups, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Igneous rocks are formed as molten magma deep in the Earth's crust. They cool slowly and solidify underground. They are very resistant to erosion. Most sedimentary rocks consist of mineral particles formed by the breakdown of older rocks. Limestone, chalk, and coal are sedimentary rocks formed from the fossilized remains of animals and plants. Metamorphic rocks have been changed as the result of heat, pressure, or chemical reactions. Rocks can be changed from one group to another by heat, pressure, erosion, or weathering. Granite and basalt are examples of igneous rocks. Chalk, limestone and clay are sedimentary rocks. Marble and slate are metamorphic rocks. It is important that you can recall examples of different types of rocks. Each has its own characteristics. Igneous and metamorphic rocks are found largely in the north and west of the British Isles. This is to the north and west of the TZXE line. Most of the south and east of the isles are made up of sedimentary rocks. Now, let's move on to the process of weathering. Erosion and weathering both result in the breakdown of rocks. Erosion involves movement whereas weathering takes place in situ. The material that has been broken down by weathering and erosion is removed by mass movement. This reveals a fresh rock face to attack from the elements. Weathered and eroded material will form scree at the bottom of a slope. There are two main types of weathering, physical and chemical. In high mountains and high latitudes, most physical weathering is by freeze-thaw. When the temperature drops below zero degrees Celsius water freezes inside cracks in the rocks. The ice can split the rocks. In deserts, the large daily range in temperature produces insulation weathering of rocks. Minerals in the rocks expand and contract at different rates setting up internal stresses. The outer rock layers flake off, so-called exfoliation or onion peeling. Scree is the accumulation of small rock fragments at the bottom of a slope. On flatter surfaces, especially where rock joints are widely spaced, freeze-thaw breaks up the rocks into massive boulders to form boulder fields. Chemical weathering is most effective in hot, wet climates. The most common forms of chemical weathering are solution weathering where rock minerals dissolve in rainwater, oxidation where minerals react with oxygen, and hydration where minerals absorb water. Carbonation causes weathering in carboniferous limestone areas. Time for the next topic, folding and faulting. Distinctive landscapes develop because of the underlying rock type and as a result of folding and faulting. Massive tectonic movements cause folding and faulting. Folding occurs where rocks bend as a result of pressure. This produces upfolds called endoclines and downfolds called synclines. The Rockies and the Alps are huge, fold mountains. Rigid or brittle rocks fault when under pressure. Rift valleys and fault scarps form as a result of normal and reverse faulting. Moving on, now we can talk about landforms. Igneous rocks develop underground as a result of interior or intrusive volcanicity. Magma solidifies to form distinctive shapes known as batholiths, dikes, and sills. Dartmoor is an example of a batholith. The granite upland is part of a much larger batholith beneath the Earth's surface. Granite forms rugged uplands, which are poorly drained with large expanses of moorland. Dominant features are tors. Dikes run across rock strata whereas sills run parallel to them. Sills often form steep valleys. 
Limestone and chalk are both calcium carbonate. Limestone is permeable but chalk is porous. Acidic rainwater chemically weathers calcium carbonate by carbonation. Car scenery develops on carboniferous limestone in areas such as the Mendips. The main features of car scenery are limestone pavements, swallow holes or sinks, caves, stalactites, and stalagmites. There is a lack of surface drainage because of the large number of underground streams and rivers. Escarpments with a steep scarp slope and a gentle dip slope are characteristic of chalk scenery. There is a lack of surface water with a complex system of dry valleys. Clay is found over extensive areas of lowlands and produces soils that are sticky and heavy when wet. Clay is impermeable, so there are many surface rivers. Thank you for watching our video. Please like, subscribe and share. And comment below so we can clarify things for you.